good afternoon. Under normal circumstances, this is arguably the most eagerly awaited Saturday on the football calendar. FA Cup third round day, the day when the mighty and powerful can fall to the lowest and weakest. The big winner today, though, is the weather with snow and frost wiping out almost half the cup ties. Nevertheless, we should continue to preview the postponed matches as well as take a closer look at those that have beaten the weather. My guest today knows all about contrasting FA Cup emotions. He was Coventry's manager when they lost to Sutton. The last team from the top flight to lose to non-league opposition. But John Sillett was also in charge of the Sky Blues at Wembley in 87 against Spurs. for joining us, John. You look like you enjoyed that day. Yeah, give me those days any day, Gary. That, that was a super, super day. I thought I was past it, you know, at uh, my age, but to go there and to achieve that was a wonderful, wonderful moment. Fantastic. You were very much the underdogs on the day as well, weren't you? Yeah, yeah, Tottenham were well, well favourites, but we had a great team spirit and we had a side that wanted to go out and win badly, you know, and that's what it's all about, getting your side to believe in themselves. Highlight of your career, that? Oh, most definitely. Has to be. It's a great day. Got to be. We'll be examining shortly the ties featuring the three non-league sides that have made it through to the third round of the Littlewood-sponsored FA Cup. But let's start by looking forward to a game that definitely goes ahead this afternoon. It comes from the group of games where second and third division sides take on the Premiership Elite. West Ham appear to have a very difficult afternoon ahead of them in Wales. Wrexham are a club with a fine tradition in recent years for felling the mighty. Rokas who took it away from Owen. Oh, mercy. Oh, he's run outside, Sartori. Now, surely, yes! Alan Smith saves Arsenal's flushes with one minute to go to half-time. Now, 11 is Phillips. Five there is the captain, Mickey Thomas. If Mickey Thomas feels he's going to score to settle against Arsenal. Lost in a cup final against someone who played for Manchester United. And it's Thomas who takes it. Oh, what a goal, Mickey Thomas! He's done it, the magic little man at the venerable age of 37. Six minutes left. Watkin. Oh, he scored! Steve Watkin has got a goal! And Arsenal face humiliation Connolly gets his defenders just split off for a second Connolly to cross cross to Durkin Durkin on the volley six minutes to go Linigan is up they're all either in the penalty area or on the side of the penalty area and it comes down an equaliser. Linigan gets the header. What drama here. Ipswich, one minute seems to have saved the game. Gary Bennett has already scored eight times in the penalty spot this season. Bennett, and it's there. Gary Bennett, what drama indeed here at the race course. Ipswich, of course, in those days were a Premier League outfit. But thanks to a lot of hard work, today's game at Wrexham goes ahead. The pitch, the racecourse ground, may not be perfect, but it's playable. And we can go there now, where Wrexham manager Brian Flynn is with John Champion. So, Brian, that's the magic of the FA Cup. Is it a snowy day in Wrexham? Yes, it's, uh, we're delighted, obviously, the game's on. The lads have worked hard this morning, but uh, the pitch is soft underneath. We've left, uh, as you can see, a, a layer on, on the pitch, a layer of snow, but it's lovely. Would you choose to play on this surface against a Premiership team? No, not really. We would like to have been um, perfect because the pitch has been playing really well this season. Uh, there's plenty of grass on it. We, we would have liked it flat and perfect, but unfortunately that's the way it is. You know, the, the weather rules, I suppose. On an occasion like this, where West Ham are struggling, they've got one or two problems, we're told, with foreigners, they've got injuries, do you start as favourites? Well, that's the danger, isn't it? You know, but saying that, because of our reputation in the FA Cup and what's happened in recent years, people will look at it, at it like that. I don't think so. I mean, nine times out of ten, West Ham will beat us. But this is the third round of the FA Cup, and the unexpected can happen. But uh, what we want is a good game. Um, it'll be a full house. We want everybody to enjoy themselves and a, and a cracking cup tie. And another Steve Watkin winner, ideally, like Arsenal. <laughs> 
Well, it's it's. I mean, it's been said many times that goal um, helped change the course of the football club because the previous season we'd finished bottom of the league. We were 92nd, and Arsenal were champions. And not not just the financial aspect of it, but it, it gave the whole place a lift. And uh, we've come on quite a way since then. Um, but it would be nice. Steve's playing again today. Um, he enjoyed that game. He had a lot of adulation, a lot of tributes, and hope he can repeat. I hope history can repeat itself. In fact, the 4th of January is a, a fairly special day in your FA Cup history because that was five years ago that you beat Arsenal. Can you remember what you were doing 22 years ago today? <laughs> Thank you for reminding me, John. Yeah, that, that's the other side of it, isn't it? We played Wimbledon. I was at Burnley at the time. We were then third uh, in what would be now the Premier Division. Wimbledon were in the Southern Division, which is you know like the Conference League. And they came to Turf Moor and beat us 1-0. And... Um, it was a game that, and like the FA Cup, throws up heroes, you know. And a certain Dick, Dickie guy was in goal for Wimbledon at the time, and it was absolutely fantastic on the day. I wonder who today's hero will be. Good luck. Thank you very much, John. Thank you. Testing day for West Ham's <laughs> foreign contingent today doesn't look very appealing. That <laughs> I pitch, wouldn't fancy it? that, Gary, too much, would they? Going out on that pitch, I can't say, oh, that's perfect for West Ham. You know, I saw the match against Stockport. And they didn't really enjoy that, and that was only the rain. Now they'll need the mittens on, the tracksuit bottoms on. <laughs> Willie Hatt a lot. Yeah, Willie Hatt a lot, yeah. Real welcome to the FA Cup. They'll get a rude awakening there. You know, you look at that pitch and you say, can, can that be right for football? Mm. It's going to be a great level of that. That will bring the league so close together. That's right. Let's have a look at the other ties featuring teams from the second and third division against Premiership opposition. Can you see any potential upsets there? Wimbledon, well, I suppose they're sort of... Small club turn big fish now, aren't they? Yeah, they're a side playing very well at the moment. I can't see crew upset in Wimbledon. No. What about elsewhere? Uh, Gillingham Derby could be an upset there. Notts County Villa. Now you've got to fancy Villa, although Notts County could be a little bit of a dark horse. There's the other one at the bottom there. At the game at Anfield, Burnley. Surely no chance there, have they? No chance whatsoever for me, Burnley. As well as, you know, Adrian Heath's done with them, I can't see him going to Liverpool, although Robbie Fowler, Fowler may be out of the side. I can tell you one thing, the Burnley players and, and the manager, Adrian Heath, are watching this programme, they're so they're not going to be too happy with you. Sorry, Adrian, sorry, players. Go and enjoy your day is all I can say to them. Yeah, let's wish them all the very best. Good luck to Burnley at Anfield. They might just need it. Now, three non-league teams have made it through to the third round. In fact, Stevenage and Hensford have come right through from the first qualifying round, and we'll have more on those ties a little later. We start, though, with Woking, the side every league club wanted to avoid. It was Coventry who drew the short straw and they have to wait for 11 days to face a club from the conference who have already beaten five league sides in the FA Cup. Gary Richardson has been finding out more about Surrey's perennial giant killers. Time. Jeff Chappell's tennis skills leave a little to be desired. But he's been highly successful during his time as manager of Woking Football Club. He's in his 13th season, a lifetime in football terms. My best memory in the Cup would be the, the very biggest occasion, or the first big occasion uh, for me as a manager, and that was obviously at West Bromwich Albion. Um, not just because we won the match 4-2 and all the hype and glory that went with it in the media interest, but um, we made a lot of friends that day and we picked up a good four or five hundred supporters that are still with us today and more importantly we made um, very good friends with the people from West Bromwich Albion who still keep in touch with us now so um, I look upon um, football as building bridges, making friends and it's not always about winning, it's about uh, competing and you know, making new acquaintances. Phil Ledger is the club chairman. He's risen to that position from humble beginnings. He was the club mascot back in 1938. He also went on to play for them, a solid goalkeeper, they say. Now he's a bit of a jack-of-all-trades. We do all sorts of jobs and get different questions. The other evening I had a phone call Christmas Eve at 9 o'clock to ask if somebody could bring their dog down versus Slough. Providing he kept it on the lead, so uh, you get all sorts of questions. They wanted to, they wanted to bring the dog here. They wanted to bring the dog here, yeah. <laughs> but and, and there's even a Norwegian branch of the Woking football supporters, yeah, is the, that right? There is a Norwegian branch, and uh, they're very active indeed. They often come over and watch the games at Woking. In fact, when we beat Millwall, Jeff Chappell, our manager, had a call at 2.30 in the morning to congratulate him on uh, the great win against them, so, uh, you know, it's all over the world, really.
Jeff, it's unusual to see a football manager sweeping out the stand. Why do you do this sort of thing? Well, about five or six years ago, we used to pay quite a bit of money just to get the ground cleaned. And of course now, we've come a long way since, obviously, but we've got the new stand and that, and it's a way of saving money, really, because it's cost of, I don't know, two, three hundred quid a week, I think, to clean this ground. And uh, we've now got uh, what we call Jeff's Red Army that turn out on a Sunday morning. I normally come in about half past six, and the rest follow me from seven o'clock onwards. And um, it's good fun, it's hard work, um, but this morning it's, it's very, very cold, obviously, and... Um, you know, we get it done in about three to four hours, and then when we finish, I take them all in the boardroom, make coffee, and we run over the previous day's game. So, you know, it's, it's quite good. This season in the Cup, Woking have already beaten Millwall and Cambridge United. And while manager Jeff Chappell is keen to stay with Woking, he is a little envious of some league managers. We often think, you know, we're undersold a little bit, the non-league managers. I often feel it's jobs for the boys at the top level. And when I see the amount of money that some of these people earn to, you know, perhaps what we feel might be a pittance for ourselves, um, and given the amount of money they've got to spend on players, I honestly feel that some of the non-league managers could make a better job. Coventry will be hoping that history doesn't repeat itself. They were on the end of a massive upset, losing to Sutton. It's a hardy. Nothing but a heartache Hits you when it's too late Hits you when you're down Ironically, Bonnie Tyler's number one hit was written by the Woking goalkeeper's dad and Jeff Chappell offers a word of caution to Coventry. They're playing with great confidence. Um, 17 million quid's worth of talent, if you like, against 50,000 pounds worth. Um, they're on a real roll and... Um, Obviously, they've turned the corner, but uh, the FA Cup is about the non-league sides and upsets. I think we're a nation of romancers, aren't we? And we all love a little bit of flirtation with the FA Cup. And, um, you know, there's every chance of an upset if we can play well and Coventry don't treat the game as they should. Well, I'm sure you've still got memories of Sutton, John. I mean, it's <laughs> um, hard to put them out of your mind. Thanks for that, Gary. Great <laughs> shot. You know, I really still get that feeling when I see that. Yes. of the lowest moment in my career at football. That you describe it as that? Oh, well, well that can happen to anybody. It can happen to anybody. I hope it don't, don't happen to anybody because it's such a horrible experience to go through. But at the same time, it's there, the cup. This happens, it throws it up every year. Any chance of lightning striking twice? No way whatsoever. Not at Highfield Road, surely. No way whatsoever. You know, I cheered when I heard the draw. I thought it's a wonderful draw for Coventry City. You know, there's only six games to get to Wembley, and that, to me, is a banker home, you know, and you've got to go out there, providing the pitch normal conditions, Coventry will win that quite easily. I'm very confident. Now, the least known non-league side in the third round has to be Hensford. They didn't exactly win the jackpot with a home draw against York, and what's more, they too have been beaten by the weather. But when it is played, they may just fancy their chances. The question is, though, who and where is Hensford? Steve Lee's been trying to find out. 